One time, I had to make up a show out of, off the top of my head. Um, and so I made up something called The After Show. Well, that show got on the air and it stayed on the air and it became our biggest hit. And it became a top 10 cable hit in the States. That show I made up in 10 seconds. Mark McGuinness is an experienced producer from Guelph, Canada. He is now a media lecturer at Breda University of Applied Sciences. During his career, he worked on hundreds of projects, where he met a lot of celebrities. This is how his journey started. My university didn't offer this type of schooling. We didn't have a film class or a TV program, so I took English and drama. What well, was at this time while I was in university that uh, the big broadcaster in Canada came to my campus and wanted to shoot a variety show on campus and they needed local people to be drivers and PAs. So I got hired as a, a driver and given a keys to a big limo and a cell phone, which was this big at the time. And uh, yeah, I joined the television business that day. Well, I spent two years, I think, as an executive assistant, as it was called then. And after two years or so, the boss I was working for uh, had told me, if you're still working for me in two years, I'm going to fire you because you're in a position where you should be able to find your own next opportunity and make your own contacts. So yeah, uh, about two years later, um, uh, he didn't fire me, but he quit the company. And I got fired by the incoming guy. That same boss that I had from those previous times ended up years later, I was in a different job. I was producing Canadian Idol. I was a producer on Canadian Idol at the time. And that uh, executive acquired the rights to MTV Canada. So again, he needed a producer fast that he could trust. And he called me and I left the job I was in and took the reins to MTV Canada as the first employee. It was hard to leave that other job because I had committed myself to those people and we were in the middle of starting up projects. You know, as you're producing one, you're always thinking about the next couple. So I had my, you know, irons in those fires and they trusted me and I liked working with them. So it was very hard to say, I'm choosing to leave you. But at the same time, when you're given the opportunity to start a whole cable company yourself, especially when it's MTV, you can't say no. So they understood that completely. And I found a way to work with them later on in, in uh, future years. As an executive at MTV, I was able to work with those producers again in a different role. We had a show at MTV called MTV Live. It was our flagship talk show, but it was really a comedy show dressed up as a talk show. And we had many celebrities on, but we wouldn't just interview them with a standard interview. We often found ways or looked for ways to do different things with the celebrities and the stars. And this interview occurred at a time when Mark Wahlberg was promoting the movie Shooter. And he was coming around on junkets. We had him up on our set. And our producer's idea was to get a paintball gun and put one of our uh, talent, uh, Paul the Intern was his name, and put him in a uh, body armor suit a very funny looking one, and then have Wahlberg shoot him like a sniper. And Wahlberg said, yeah, he'll do it. And the, we got it all set up and we put Paul over in the corner against the curtain with the lights. And Wahlberg got up there and started taking shots. And he caught Paul just in the, just where the mask and the vest didn't meet, he caught him right there. And so he was very concerned for a second, but um, Paul was okay and Mark, you know, was okay. And not too many celebrities would pick up a gun and play like that on your show. So he trusted us and it turned out to be fantastic event and you know that picture went viral for whatever that was worth in those days. Well I really enjoyed Katy Perry you know when we produced her she had a broken leg and she didn't want her fans to know it she didn't want anybody who was not in the studio to know that she was on tour and she was trying to like keep it on the download that she was injured um, so she she was in full makeup full clothing but we only could shoot her from the knees up um, and because she was she just struggled and worked hard and was you know, running around on stage with this broken leg every night, um, but was still giving great performances and wonderful interviews. That was pretty impressive to see her do that. Another shock was Tom Cruise, how incredibly humble he is. You know, he was absolutely the biggest celebrity in the world when we got him, but he went around and met everybody on the crew, uh, which you don't really expect a, a mega, mega star to want to do, is to just introduce himself and thank you for being there. He looks genuinely, sincerely grateful for us. So these are the surprises I've had over celebrities. You know, often what I learned was that the bigger they come, the more humble they actually are.
I wanted to get into teaching because I'd been exposed to the academic world my whole life. I grew up very close to a university campus and several times um, I intended to extend my educational career and go on and on. However, I got recruited out of uh, my school and into the business. So I, as I went on in production, it never left my head that I could always return uh, to university at some point. Little did I know I'd be returning as a lecturer instead of as a student, but um, I always have been attracted to the university environment, the academic environment, and I feel like the opportunity to teach young people the things that I knew and learned would uh, be a very fun experience and allow me to take a breath from the grind of what I was doing and see my work in a different light. Teaching has been very rewarding. It's a very interesting process to study deeply the things you know intuitively and find a way to relate those in a way that can enlighten students and apply to academic plans. So in thinking about all of the uh, things I learned over the course of my career and then replaying them in an organized way in an academic format is uh, a way of learning twice. Working with students your age reminds me a lot of my time at MTV. At MTV, a lot of my employees were very young in their early 20s without a lot of uh, bad habits or unpleasant experiences in the, in the world. So I was able to shape and mold a lot of them in the right ways to do things and in, in, uh, what I considered the proper way to approach production and development. So here at BUAS, I feel that same energy and that same potential. Well, the Netherlands is a much older country than Canada. This is an ancient culture with um, a long, long cultural history and just being immersed in that and learning it is a very different experience than being in a, such a new young country like Canada where I feel like I knew everything. And I would say the biggest uh, change would be the language barrier. Not understanding what people are saying, not even knowing if a word is a word or a name for something or, or what, um, also makes you learn. It also makes your brain grow and keeps you awake and alive and thinking. So yeah, it's been an eye-opening experience to come here. I don't think I'll ever stop producing. You know, uh, I would like to continue teaching for as long as possible, but uh, at this point, I don't know. Oh my God, I could have prepared that. Work hard, listen. Listening is the number one communication skill that you have to develop and there's a skill to that, so work on listening. Uh, be patient, patience is absolutely uh, a resource and a, and a fuel that you can use. Guard your reputation. It is the most important thing to you. And do well at BUAS. Study hard. Those are my five tips. Good. Thank you very much.